Hey, what's going on? My name is Peter Sorellis. I'm a videographer and editor from Toronto, Canada. I specialize in sports videography. And today I'm taking you along with me to film a basketball game for the Canadian Elite Basketball League, who I work for as a videographer and video editor full time. And today is a special day. It's different. And what's different about today versus the last game day vlog that I did is today there are fans in the stadium. And this isn't the first day of CEBL fans back in CEBL stadiums here in Canada, but in general in Canada, it's been a long time since we've been able to have fans in the stadiums for any sort of event, like a concert or any sporting event. So it's a big deal to actually have sporting events in Canada with fans again. And the whole experience of filming a sporting event, like a basketball game with fans, is completely different than filming one where the gym is completely empty and you're just focusing on the game. There's a lot more to consider when you're filming a basketball game or any professional sporting event, really, that has people watching, because then it goes from just becoming a game to becoming a whole spectacle. And your job as a sports videographer is to capture that entire thing and make people feel who are watching a video on the computer like they're actually there at the venue or like they could have been there and they got that same experience after the game. So I'm gonna take you and show you exactly what it's like to be a sports videographer in that environment and how that differentiates from just filming a regular basketball game at an empty gym. So I think today's gonna to be a lot of fun. We're gonna hit the road and head to Niagara from where I live. It's about like an hour and a half to two hours maybe, depending on the traffic, depending on the time of day you leave to get all the way down to the stadium where the Niagara River Lions play. So it's a bit of a hefty drive. We're gonna hit the road soon, but first I wanna kind of show you, like just quickly, what I use on an everyday basis for games when I'm going to film events. So this isn't gonna be everything because obviously I'm holding a camera set up right now. I have my Sony a7 III and the Tamron 2875 lens on here. Let's open up my camera bag. This is the uh, little pouch for my Rode Wireless Go that I'm wearing right now to record this. And then I've got my Sony 70 to 200 F4, which is pretty much the lenses I use like 90% of the time when I'm filming. This Tamron is not used nearly as often as this Sony lens right here. I've got the Sony a6500, which I keep in my camera bag just as like a backup camera in case something goes wrong, in case I need a second angle. I think it's always good to have two cameras because if you have one camera and it stops working, then you're kind of in trouble. And here I have my Andy Cine A6 Plus monitor. Let me boot these cords out of the way. Ooh, yeah, we got my little monitor right here. And then this miscellaneous cables and you can see like, there's like batteries in there. Little top handle bit that I put onto my cage. If you wanna see more about like the cage build and all of that, you can actually go check out this video like right there. And I did a little video kind of explaining how I go about rigging out my camera for a sports game, so that could be helpful. And then in this top compartment here, we've got a Rode Video Micro. This is like a little shotgun mic I throw on top of my camera when I'm filming. And I've got this big pouch thing, and I keep my Insta360, a little magic arm, a whole bunch of other miscellaneous accessories up in here. And then I just got like cables and stuff spewed at the bottom of my bag. There's a little like multi-tool in here that I can show you. Yeah, so I bring this little multi-tool to all my games. It has like a couple screwdrivers on it, a few different size Allen keys. It's got this one big flat one for base plates, which is pretty useful. Yeah, I have a pair of pliers in here too, a whole bunch of other stuff. Oh, and of course, forgot to mention, got my laptop as well so that I can make edits in game. Very important, especially when you're shooting with someone else that you get stuff on social media right away. So gotta have that with me when I'm going to any game day. All right, now let's get going. All right, got caught in traffic, but I'm here. Game trip's off in about 40 minutes. Got to go through COVID procedures. Probably take me about 15 minutes, and then I'll be in right in time for tip. Not ideal, but uh, I'm not gonna miss any of the game, so it's all right.
So typically when I'm filming a basketball game, I'll begin on the baseline, filming plays for one of the teams, and when I get enough highlights that I have something good to post to social, then I'll go back to the table where I have my laptop set up, take the SD card out of my camera and put it into my computer, and put a second SD card into my camera, which I continue filming on, while editing during dead balls and in between plays. In this situation here, there was only 30 seconds left in the quarter, and I saw that it was going to be one team who got the final shot. So I grabbed my camera, put the laptop down for a second, and made my way over to the sideline next to where the assistant coach was located and framed up to get the final shot of the quarter. Luckily, the player made the final shot. It was a three from the corner. So then I went back to my computer, took the SD card out of my camera, and put it back into the computer, grabbed the other SD card that was in there, and put it back into my camera. And during the break between the quarter, I edited out that play and cut it for social, and this is what it looked like. I started the third quarter filming on the baseline before quickly moving to the sideline to get a different angle of the action and got a couple cool plays including this fast break dunk and an and one three by the home team. I then decided that I was going to go up to the top of the lower level so that I can get a bit of a higher vantage point. I really like this angle specifically when I'm filming basketball because it kind of looks like a broadcast camera, but it's DSLR quality. And I think that using a top down or a high angle in your edits can look really cool as it did in some of the plays that you're seeing here. I personally got some of my favorite shots from this game from this high angle. And if you have the chance to get to a higher vantage point when you're filming basketball, I would definitely recommend that you do so. Alright, so that does it for the game. Not a bad one if I do say so myself. Would I have liked to pick a closer game to vlog? Sure. But you also don't know how the game is going to end until it actually happens. So um, I think that this game gave you a pretty good idea of how I go about shooting a game. Just so like between going to the court, shooting different plays, making a point of going to different areas on the court. So as you saw, I was like way in the stands with the fans for a little bit. I was on the baseline, I was in the corner. I was at center court, I made sure I filmed both teams and kept moving around for a few minutes, or at least like well, I get a couple angles every quarter. And then I was also like running back to the laptop and doing edits, which you saw when I was uh, in the stadium. And that's usually what a game day looks like for me. Just making sure that I can get content for now to post on social and get a lot of angles of content, a lot of shots of different teams, a good variety of stuff that I can use from the game for later down the road when I'm using this media to promote the teams in a year from now, two years from now. I wanna make sure that I'm covering that stuff for the future as well. But uh, it's nine, it's 9.30 right now, and I got about an hour and a half drive all the way back, and I'm pretty hungry, so uh, yeah, let's get going. All right, so I'm back from Niagara. Bit of a long drive. I'm pretty tired, can't lie. But I've got a little bit more editing to do, so right now I'm actually working on sponsored posts that we have to fulfill after every single game. So like, teams will have posts like the drive of the game, the assist of the game, and they'll be sponsored by certain companies. And after every game day, my job, or at least part of my job, 
is to take clips that I've shot and the other videographers have shot over the course of the game day, grab these clips, bring them in, and then cut these sponsored posts so that we can put them out on social media that night or the following morning to fulfill these obligations that we've made and produce more content for our sponsors. So that's the last thing I'm doing right now. Once that is done, then I'm basically just gonna wrap everything up, back up all this, well, I've already backed up all the footage, but I'm gonna back up this footage that you're watching right now, like the vlog footage, and then I'm going to sleep. And you're gonna do it all again tomorrow. All right, anyways, that's gonna be all for this video. I hope that you enjoyed this inside look at what it's like to go film a professional basketball game as a sports videographer. If you like this video, then please make sure to subscribe to the channel because I post videography and video editing tutorials, vlogs, in the field type of stuff, all that good stuff on a regular basis, and I would love to have you around for that. And if you have any other questions about this video, there's something that came up that I didn't really get to answer while I was filming this, then drop it down in the comments. I'll get back to you down there and answer any questions you might have. And it's going to be all for today, so until next time, peace.